And so I will go ahead and start with our uh, class for today, uh, which is Al Imanu Bil Qadr, the belief in the divine decree. Bismillah, uh, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ala Ali wa sahbihi wa sallam. So, um, so we're continuing the book, this book, Sharh Usul Al Iman, uh, explanation of the fundamentals of faith. And we're, going, we've moved, we're moving on to, we're getting towards the end of the book, actually, because we've covered uh, what are the pillars of Islam, what does Islam mean, what are the virtues of Islam, then uh, what, are the, uh, what does aqidah mean, what does iman mean, what does you know, our creed of beliefs, what does faith mean, like these type of things, what's the explanation, what does la ilaha illallah mean, what are the conditions, the shurut, the conditions of the statement la ilaha illallah. Then we talked about, then we went into these these articles of faith, these pillars of faith, al-arkanul iman, excuse me, arkanul iman sitta, the six articles of faith, and the first being al-imanu billah, to believe in Allah. And we discussed that uh, belief in Allah includes four things. It includes uh, the belief that Allah exists first and foremost, and then also that we believe in the tawheed of Allah's uh, uluhiyah, his right of being worshipped alone, and uh, the tawheed of Allah's rububiyah, that, that Allah uh, is the Lord of all that exists. He creates everything. He created everything that exists. He owns everything that exists, and he controls the affairs of everything that exists. And Tawheed uh, al-Asma'i wa Sifat, that Allah is, uh, has uh, beautiful names and perfect att attributes that he does not share with his creatures. His creatures are not like him or similar to him in his, his uh, attributes and qualities. Then we talked about Al-Iman bi malaikatihi, the belief in Allah's angels, and what does that mean? and uh, the details about that. And then we talked about uh, the al-iman bi kutubihi, the belief in Allah's revelations, the books that he revealed, his scriptures, the divinely revealed books, the last of which, of course, is and the one, only one that has been preserved is the Qur'an. And then we talked about al-iman bi rusulihi, the belief in Allah's messengers, and what do we understand about believing in the prophets and messengers of Allah, and what is who are al-anbiya wa rusul, the prophets and messengers? And what is the difference between the prophet, a prophet, someone who has received a nubuwa, prophethood, as opposed to someone who received nubuwa and then also re received something called a risala, meaning they became a messenger of Allah along with being a prophet of Allah. And the first of those messengers of Allah, we said, was Nuh, alayhi salam, prophet Noah, and the last of them is prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the uh, Prophet, first prophet of Allah, of course, is, was Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi said that Adam was a prophet because Allah spoke to him. Okay. Um, and then we talked about al-iman bil yawm al-akhir, belief in the last day. What does it mean to believe in the day of judgment, the day of resurrection, that there will be a day of recompense, there will be reward and punishment, a day will everything will be destroyed and then re resurrected and brought back to life again for a final judgment. And then the creatures will be sorted out at, uh, into those who will go to the paradise, al-jannah, and that will be their final and eternal abode, a place of living for, uh, for e uh, eternity. And then we talked, of course, that there will be uh, al-jahannam, or al-nar, the hellfire, which will be the place of abode, or uh, eternal place of, uh, of rest or abode for the uh, people, uh, the wicked people, the disbelievers, and uh, the people who are not uh, in Allah's favor on that day. And so, and then we talked, when we talked about, we spent a couple of weeks actually talking about Ashrat uh, al the signs of the hour. The, what are the signs, some signs of the Day of Judgment that were mentioned by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Peace and blessings be upon him. And some of the minor signs, those things that are more general and minor, which we consider minor signs. And then we talked about uh, the major signs, some things that are major signs of the Day of Judgment, that, that last day that will come. And so we're moving now to the final, sixth and final pillar of Islam which is, uh, uh, excuse me, not of Islam, of Iman, of faith, it's the sixth and final pillar of faith, which we see is belief in the divine decree of Allah. And uh, we will go forward with that from the discussion from Sheikh Muhammad uh, Ibn Salih al-Uthaymeen, rahimahullah. So Sheikh Uthaymeen, he says, al-Imanu bil-Qadr, to believe in Qadr, to believe in the divine decree of Allah. We call this al-Qadr, okay? Uh, he said, well, so what is al-Qadr? He said, al-Qadr is taqdirullah ta'ala, للكائنات حسب ما سبق به علمه واقتضته حكمته. So he says it is Allah's predestination and measurement, uh, oh, excuse me, pre predestination of measurements and sustenance of everything and everyone according to his knowledge and his wisdom, according to what preceded of his knowledge, because his knowledge preceded everything uh, before anything came into existence. 
Allah, Allah knew of that. His knowledge preceded it. And his wisdom, and according to what his wisdom dictates, uh, that's literally what uh, this taqdeer, uh, what qadr is. Qadr is that Allah determines what, uh, what will be, uh, all of the things in existence, what will be, and what those things will get, and what uh, they will have for them, for the, what they will receive of sustenance, and so forth like this, and what will happen to them, etc., all of that. Uh, and it is determined by what he knew, what he know, his knowledge, and his wisdom. Okay? Um, the next thing I want to mention is that there are two terms that you will come across in the Qur'an and the Sunnah regarding this predestination, if you will, or this preordainment, or this divine decree, however you want to translate it. With all these things have similar meanings in English, okay? Um, and one of them is the word, one of those words is uh, al-qadr, and the other is qada. And actually, we, you all have a typo here. I correct, because I corrected this, I, real, I remember now, I corrected this on the PowerPoint slides. And this, uh, after I sent it to Yasmin, I noticed that there was a uh, typo. Actually, these should be switched. Um, and, I'm, and you'll see in a minute what I'm talking about if you look at your PowerPoint based upon what, what your slide is based upon what's up, written up here. So the terms are al-qadr and al-qada. Al-qadr and al-qada, okay? Those are the terms that you'll see used in the Quran and the Sunnah for preordainment, okay? Or predestiny, okay? Um, both terms are used in the Quran by Allah. The difference between them, according to the scholars, is that qaba refers to the event that has occurred when the event actually happens. And see, I have it reversed here. By mistake, I, I have qadr there. I, I switched them. So if you want to you know, write in, if you have a pen or something, switch those two terms, because I, I switched them accidentally. But on the slides here, it's correct. Up here on the PowerPoint you're looking at is correct. So on your written slides, you can correct it. You know, the printed slides. Are. So um, qaba refers to the event that has occurred. When it happens, this is referred to as qada, okay? Whereas qadr refers to the preordainment of the event by Allah before it has actually happened. When Allah actually determined that it would happen before it happened, you understand? When Allah originally determined that that thing would happen, this is considered as qadr. When it actually occurs, we refer to it as qada, you say, okay? And the statement regarding that, here's the fatwa of Sheikh uh, it's not in your slides, it's in all Arabic. But this is uh, Sheikh Luthaymin explaining, I'll, re I'll explain it to you what it's saying here. The questioner is asking, Ma huwa al farq bayn al qada wal qadr? What is the difference between qada and qadr? And so he was, they're asking the same Sheikh, Sheikh Luthaymin, okay? This is from, taken from a book of his, Majmu'a Fatawa wa Rusail, Fabir al Sheikh Muhammad bin Sari al Uthaymin. That's the reference. Uh, the second volume, Al Mujallad al Thani, in the, uh, the Fatawa al Aqidah, rulings concerning beliefs. The safha, the page is 70, uh, 79, tiswa 70, okay? So he said, the person says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, also, su'ila fudilat al-shaykh Muhammad bin Salih al-Uthaymeen, rahimahullah, ma al-farq bayna al-qada wa al-qadr. The person uh, asked what, Shaykh Uthaymeen, what is the difference between these two terms, qada and qadr? Because they're used in the Quran, and linguistically, they have, may have a, you know, they have a similar meaning in Arabic, you know? So they're like, why does it, Allah may use one in one place, he says qada, another place, he says qadr. So the person saying, what is the difference? So, فَأَجَابَ بِقَوْلِهِ So the shaykh answered with his statement, اِخْتَلَفَ الْعُلَمَا فِي الْفَرْقِ بَيْنَهُمَا He says, so the scholars have different, differed regarding what is the difference between these two terms. The scholars, there's a difference of opinion, in other words, between the scholars. Okay? فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَالَ So from amongst them, there are those who say, إِنَّ الْقَدَرْ تَقْدِرُ اللَّهِ فِي الْأَزِلْ وَالْقَضَى حُكْمُ اللَّهِ بِالشَّيْءِ عِنْدُ وُقُوعِهِ So he says that qadr is the Allah's determining that thing happening in pre-existence. You know, before things came into existence, Allah predetermined that that thing will happen. So this is what qadr is. Okay? And he says, qadr, those scholars say, is uh, Allah's ruling regarding that thing, uh, his, you know, that thing coming into happen, in the when it happens. When the thing actually happens, then we refer to it as qadr, just as I told you all. And qadr is when Allah actually predestined, when he determined it, before anything ever even came into existence, he determined that that thing would happen. You all understand? So he says, فَإِذَا قَدْرُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ أَنْ يَكُونَ شَيْءٍ الْمُعَيِّنْ فِي وَقْتِهِ فَهَذَا قَدْرُ So he says, so if Allah, the glory be unto him, the Most High, uh, determines that something specific will happen at a particular time, when he determines that that thing is going to occur in the future, that, that is قَدْر. فَإِذَا جَاءَ الْوَقْتِ But then when the time comes for that thing to actually occur, أَلَّذِي يَكُونُ فِيهِ هَذَا شَيْءٍ فَإِنَّهُ يَكُونُ قَضَى but when the time comes for that thing to actually happen, and it actually occurs, then we call that qada. Okay? So the qadr is when he 
preordained it to happen. Before, wait, long, you know, thousands and thousands of years before he created the heavens and the earth, anything, he determined that that thing would happen. That's qadr. That's his qadr. Preordainment. Okay? But then when the time comes for that thing to happen and it occurs, this is qadr. Okay? But it's still considered, it's preordained, something that was preordained, but it's now, it actually has occurred. Okay? It's occurring. Yeah. That, right, that's what we're calling it, right? right. Okay. Yeah, we, that's what we're calling it. And that's the word the Prophet used in the Hadith. Okay. When Jibreel asked him, أَخْبِرُنِي عَنِ iman Inform me what is iman, what is faith. When he got to that sixth point, point he said, وَأَن تُؤْمِنَا بِقَدْرِهِ He said that you believe in his qadr, Allah's qadr. خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِهِ The good outcomes of it and what seems bad of it. Okay? So the word the Prophet used is qadr. But Allah also uses in the Quran this term qadr. And we're going to see examples of that today as we go through this topic. Allah, sometimes Allah says qada, okay? All right. All right. which has a similar meaning in Arabic. Something is to be determined, predetermined. Okay. So, um, so he says, وَهَذَا كَثِيرٌ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْكَرِيمِ And this occurs often in the Noble Quran. مِثْلُ قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى Like the statement of Allah Ta'ala where he says, Allah said, وَقُوْضِيَ الْأَمْرُ And the matter was predetermined. The matter was determined, predetermined. قُوْضِيَ الْأَمْرُ That word قُوْضِيَ, that verb comes from the word qada. Not qadr, it comes from the word qadr, okay? the one without the R. All right? um, and that's in Surah Al Yusuf, verse 41, if you want to look it up. The next is, and also he says, وَقَوْلُهُ in Allah's statement, for example, وَاللَّهُ يَقْضِي بِالْحَقِّ And Allah determines things, predetermines things according to what is what the truth. Allah's qadr is the truth, you know. All right? Allah used the term there, qadr, again, all right? the verb for it, yaqti. Okay? That's in Surah Al Ghafir, verse 20. Okay? And he says, well, ma ashbaha dhalika, and whatever is similar to that, and other examples. He's just saying these are two examples. Okay? فَالْقَدْرْ تَقْدِرُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى الشَّيْءِ فِي الْأَزَلْ وَالْقَضَى قَضَاءُهُ بِهِ عِنْدُ وَقُعِهِ So he says, therefore, qadr is the Allah's predetermining something to happen before it actually happens. All right? You know, that Allah already determined that this will thing will happen. You know, thousands of years ago in the past, before he created anything, even, he already determined that this will happen. Okay? And when we, qada, when we use the term qada, that is his, his decision of, of when, when that thing actually occurs, that we, we refer to it then as qada. Okay? So if you want to say what's the difference between them, that would be the difference between them. So that's one opinion of the scholars, though. He said, so there's, of the scholars, there are those who hold that opinion. And this is the opinion that I was taught, that I learned when I was learning aqidah. I understood this. This is what I understand. And that's why I put it in the slides like that. And it's a valid, you know, there's a valid, those scholars have valid reasons to say that because they looked into the when did Allah use these terms. And how they're, you know, how they're, uh, you know, how, what's the difference between them, how he uses them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? All right? So there's nothing wrong with that opinion. No, that's, that's correct. Okay? And from them, he says, well, من هم, من قال بمعنى واحد. And there are some that say they are the same thing. They mean exactly the same thing. There's no difference. Like Allah may use them interchangeably, but they're synonymous. You can use either one interchangeably, you can use them interchangeably. But the most, the strongest opinion, the correct view, al-rajih, he says the correct opinion, annahuma, that these two things, if they come together, jami'an, if they come collective, we use, I mean, we're using them in the same topic, we're talking about them in the same paragraph, or the same sentence, or in the same discussion, we're talking about qadr and qada, okay, like this. He says, then in that case, فَبَيْنَهُمَا farq kama sadaq. Then in that case, when we use them together, we're talking about them both, then they do, there's a difference between them, and it is just as we have described already, what we've mentioned. One is this, and the other one is that. Okay, but he says, "Well, in afra the ahadu huma an al akhar, fa huma bi ma'ana wahid." Wallahu a'lam. But if one of them is used distinctly, separately, without the other being used in the discussion, then in that case they have the same meaning. They're synonymous. Okay, and Allah knows best. And this is a, there's a principle in Islam like this, where if you find two things um, in the language of the Sharia, the religion that have very similar meanings. In the, even in the Arabic language, they're, you know, linguistically they mean like the same thing. Okay? Uh, if they're used together, then there's a reason they're used together in the discussion, and that's because there is a difference between them. Okay? But if they're used independently, separately, then they mean the same thing. Okay? All right. So inshallah, that is uh, clear. Okay? So that is the fatwa of Sheikh al Utaymin about that previous slide about the difference between qadr and qada. All right? So the next thing, so he says, Well Imanu Bil Qadr Yatadamanu Arbata Umur. Belief in Qadr, it includes four aspects. It has four aspects. Okay? So the first aspect, Al Awul, okay? The first Al Amr Awul is Al Iman bi Allah Ta'ala Alima bi Kulishay, Jumlatan wa Tafsilan. 
the first is to believe, the belief that Allah's knowledge encompasses everything, every matter, major or minor, that Allah knows everything, jumlatan wa tafsilan, in general and in details, okay? Uh, before everything existed and uh, everything that will come to be eternally, Allah knows all of that. So, wa'an kana dhalika mimma yata'alliqu bi af'alihi aw af'ali ibadihi. And it makes no difference whether that those, that, uh, those things are, occur from, are, are related to his deeds, things that Allah does himself, or they're related to things that, uh, the uh, actions of his creatures, the actions of his, cre his slaves, okay? His cre which means his creatures, okay? So Allah's knowledge encompasses everything. There's nothing that Allah does not know. Allah always knew everything. There was never a time that, th there's no nothing that existed in the past, nothing that will exist in the future, Nothing that exists now in all of existence, not just in this room or in Nashville or in the United States or in, you know, on, the, on the planet Earth. Everything that exists, Allah knows about it now. He knows what will happen to it in the future in detail. Okay? And what he knew about it before all of this before he even brought it into existence. Okay? Allah says, and Allah has knowledge of everything. Allah mentions that his knowledge encompasses everything, okay? These are verses in the Quran, all right? So there's nothing that escapes Allah's knowledge. And this is the first aspect of belief in Allah's qadr, his decree, his preordainment. Part of the, our belief in Allah, that Allah has preordained whatever happens, whatever happens, it happens according to his predetermining it and, and uh, ordaining, you know, the, 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 uh, his divine decree of decreeing that it will exist or happen. That, the first aspect of that is that Allah knew everything, you know, <laughs> Allah, and he always has known everything. There never was a time that he didn't know everything, all right? And so then, the, the, next, the next aspect, a thani, the second aspect of belief in Allah's divine decree, is al-imanu bi anna Allah kataba dhalika fil lawh al-mahfud. It is the belief that Allah wrote everything. He, so firstly, he knew everything, and secondly, we want to understand that Allah wrote everything, okay, in a book that he has kept with him, and it's called Allah al-Mahfud, which means the preserved tablet, okay? Okay, and so he says, um, for example, there's a verse in the Quran, أَلَمْ تَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ فِي كِتَابٍ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرٍ Allah says, do you, know you not, do you not know that Allah knows all that is in the heaven and on the earth? Verily, it is all in the book which is talking about Allah al-Mahfud, the preserved tablet that Allah has with, kept with him. Verily that, inna dhalika ala Allahi yaseer. Verily that is something easy for Allah. Okay? This is the 27, 22nd chapter of the Quran, verse 70. Yes, that's an... No, this book, Allah al-Mahfud, is not the Quran. The good, very good point. Allah al-Mahfud, this book that Allah has preserved with him, Allah, that Allah calls in the Quran, Allah al-Mahfud. Okay? This is not the Quran. The Quran came from that book. That book is the book of, of all that will be. That book is the book of, 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 of existence. Okay? And so that book contains everything that would be. So the Quran was taken from that book. Allah, uh, Jibreel, uh, that book, the, the Quran was in Allah al-Mahfud, written that in Allah al-Mahfud, and Jibreel took those verses and, and descended with them to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and recited them to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Okay? And a, another point about this, since you mentioned it, there's a verse in the Quran where Allah says, "Wala yamasuhu illa al-mutahharun," that none should touch it except for those who are pure. Okay, kitabul maknun, a, a, tab, a tablet that is pres preserved like this, and none should touch it except for those who are pure. People think this is talking about the Quran, so they say you have to have wudu when you touch the Quran. That verse is not talking about the Quran. That verse is talking about Allah al-Mahfud, the preserved tablet, and those mutahharun are the al-malaika, the angels. <laughs> It's not talking about the Qur'an and you have to have wudu before you touch the Qur'an. That's not what it's the verse is talking about. According to the scholars of tafsir of the past, you know, okay, of the salaf, okay, the, imam, the great imams of tafsir of the past. It does not mean, the, that verse does not mean the Qur'an. It's not a proof that you can't touch the Qur'an unless you have wudu. Right? Next, he brings uh, uh, a hadith that is in the Sahih of Muslim, Sahih Muslim, this hadith collection Sahih Muslim, on the authority of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, may Allah be pleased with him and his father. That he said, سَمِعْتُ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم, يقول, I heard the Messenger of Allah saying, كَتَبَ اللَّهُ مَقَادِرَ الْخَلَائِقِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَخْلُقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بِخَمْسِينَ أَلْفَ سَنَةِ He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah saying, Allah 
wrote down, uh, they translate as recorded, but Allah wrote, katab Allah, means Allah wrote down the preordained measurement of all matters that would be pertaining to creation, okay? Before he created the heavens and the earth, and it was 50,000 years before he created the heavens and the earth. Allah wrote this, okay? So everything that would be, all right, everything that would happen, everything that would occur, before Allah created anything, 50,000 years, khamsina al fasana. 50,000 years before Allah created anything of the heavens and the earth. He wrote this, uh, the, those matters, uh, as the Prophet called it, maqadir al-khala'iq, the predetermined, preordained things that would happen of, uh, pertaining to the creation. He wrote all of that 50,000 years before he created anything, okay, before, of, the, of the heavens and the earth. Okay? So this, everything is written. Fi kitab al maknun, you know. Fi lawh al mahfuz in this preserved tablet, everything that would be, okay? Also, we can add along with this, there's an authentic hadith uh, that is in the Sunan of Abi Dawood, I believe, where the Prophet ﷺ, he said, أَوَّلَ مَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ الْقَلَمِ The first thing that Allah created was the pen. وَقَالَ لَهُ أُكْتُبْ Allah said to the pen, write. وَقَالَ مَا أَكْتُبْ يَا الرَّبْ And the pen said, what should I write, my Lord? وَقَالَ أُكْتُبْ مَا كَائِنَ إِلَى يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ And Allah told the pen, he said, write down whatever would be until the day of judgment. So this hadith proves that the first thing that Allah created was that qalam, which is called al-qalam, the pen. Okay? Uh, how is it and what is it like? We don't know. It's of the unseen matters. It's not something, it's not like this with, you know, big ink and stuff. We, you know, it's a pen that Allah, a writing utensil that Allah created and, to, and used to write that lawha, in that Allah al-mahfuz, that preserved tablet. Okay? And that happened 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth. Allah commands it, to, it writes according to the command of Allah. Because Allah commanded uktub, write. And it said, ma uktub, what should I write? Uktub ma ka'in in al Write whatever would, will happen up until to the day of judgment. Okay. All right. So uh, the next thing, the third thing, a thalith, is al iman bi anna jami al kainat la takun illa bi mashiati Allahi ta'ala. It is the belief that nothing, whether related to Allah's actions or the actions taken by his creatures, none of it can happen except for with Allah's permission, at, with Allah's will. Okay. So, um, and he brings a verse, and we'll go to the next slide, with Allah's permission. And he brings a verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَارُ Your Lord, and your Lord creates whatever he wills and chooses. Okay? This is sort of the 28th surah of the Quran, verse 68. وَقَالْ And Allah says, وَيَفْعَلُ مَا يَشَاءُ And Allah, he, Allah, he does whatever he wills, whatever he wishes. Surah 14, chapter of the Quran, verse 27. And another verse he says, where Allah says, وَهُوَ الَّذِي يُسَوِّرُكُمْ فِي الْأَرْحَامِ كَيْفَ يَشَاءَ And Allah, he is, it is he who shapes you in the wombs, meaning the wombs of your mother, as he pleases. كَيْفَ يَشَاءَ However he wishes, however he wills. So this is talking about al-mashi'a. This word is called al-mashi'a. The will of Allah. Okay? Um, so he says, and then also Allah said, regarding... Uh, to, uh, فيما يتعلق بفعل فعل المخلوق مخلوقين in reference to what relates to the actions of the creatures the cre created creatures لو شاء الله لصلتهم عليكم فلقاتلوكم so Allah said if Allah had willed indeed he would have given if Allah had willed this we're talking about the Mashiach لو شاء الله if Allah had willed okay, indeed he would have given them meaning your enemies power over you and they would have fought you okay? that's, that's the fourth chapter of the Quran verse 90 and then he says Allah says ولو شاء الله ما فعلوه فَذَرْهُمْ وَمَا يَفْتَرُونَ يفترون. Allah says, and if uh, Allah had willed, they would not have done so. So leave them alone with their fabrications. Okay. So this talking, all these are talking about Allah's will. And notice we say, Allah. Okay. When we say, Allah, Allah. Okay. Allah said in the Quran, لا تقول إني فاعل ذلك غدا إلا إن شاء الله. Do not say in Surah Al-Kaf. Do not say I'm going to do something tomorrow, except for that you say if Allah wills. In شاء الله. So Muslims we say in شاء الله. The Prophet ﷺ. He used to say, "Ma sha Allahu kain, wa ma lam yasha lam yakun." Whatever Allah wills will be, and whatever He doesn't will, it won't happen. Okay. So everything is according to the Mashia, the will of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. This is part of Allah's decree that nothing happens except for that Allah wills it. Okay. Okay. Um, and also, you know, we can add an, in this discussion. There's another word that is used, an irada. Okay, irada, which means what Allah wants. Okay. Allah says, "Fa'alun uh, lima yurid." Allah does whatever he wants to do. فَعَالٌ لِمَا يريد. He does whatever he wants to do. Okay? So we have these two terms, al-irada and al-mashi'ah. 
Mashiach, we translate this to mean like what he wills, what he wishes to happen, what he wills. And irada is what he wants. Nothing happens unless he wants that thing to happen. Okay? So these are uh, things to note, to pay note or pay, ten, pay attention to regarding this matter. Okay? So the, uh, the next thing, the fourth, the fourth aspect of belief in Allah's decree is al-iman bi anna jami' al-kainat makhluqah lillahi ta'ala bi dhawatiha wa sifatiha wa harakatiha. Is that is that we believe the belief that Allah created all of the creation and all what they possess of attributes and all of their actions. So it's talking them about the matter of his his creating. Okay, that whatever exists, whatever happens, it is of his creation. Okay, it is of his creation. All right, because whatever comes to be, that's also part of the decree. Whatever happens also includes whatever comes into existence. Okay. So whatever comes into existence, Allah created that. Nothing comes into existence except for Allah created it, okay? Whether we perceive it to be good or bad, you know? Whether it's something good or bad, or, you know, this is a bad person, it's an evil guy, that's a Napoleon, Hitler, whatever. Allah still created them, you know? They're still, Allah created everything. Nothing was created by, like, the devil, you know, or something like that. And so there's the devil's creatures that he made, and then Allah created, no, no. All, everything that exists, including the devil, including shaitan, Allah created all of it, okay? So this is also a part of belief in Allah's, uh, decree. Okay? And so he brings a verse in the Quran where he says, Allahu khaliqu kulli shay, wa huwa ala kulli shayin wakil. That Allah is the creator of all things, everything, okay? And he is the guardian over all things. This is the 39th chapter of the Quran, verse 62, okay? And Allah says, wa khaliqu kulli shayin bi faqaddarahu taqdiran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that uh, he has created everything and he has measured it exactly according to its due measurements, okay? The taqdeer, he has determined it, predetermined it, okay? And also, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned an Nabi Allah Ibrahim alayhi salatu about uh, on, the, on, the, you know, on the tongue, upon, upon the tongue of telling what happened with Ibrahim, something that Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu said to his people, annahu qala li qawmihi, that he said to his people, Prophet Abraham, he said to his people, uh, he says, wallahu khalaqakum wa ma ta'amaloon. Allah created you all and what you all are doing. You mean they, they're making idols and they're fabricating idols and making Allah created even what you make. Allah, you're making Allah created that too. You know? okay. Showing that Allah, you know, even the deeds and actions, they are part of the creation of Allah. All of that falls on the, the creatures and what they do is, you know, what they make and what they do is from Allah's creation. Okay. All right. Okay, so we, on to, we have a quiz question. All right. <laughs> All right, um, is that right? Yeah, I guess I didn't skip slides. Okay, I just put that in there. So we're ready for our quiz questions. First, first our take, so we take a break from the topic and we'll have our quiz question. Uh, so the question, um, how will knowledge of Islam be removed from the earth? What does this have to do with anything? Why is that put there? Why would I put that in the, in the presentation? Because we talked about, we talked about of the signs of the day of judgment, okay? So we want, uh, the, it's an authentic hadith mentioned from the Prophet, sorry, someone he mentioned it, but I want to see if you all remembered it. How will, how will knowledge of Islam be removed from the earth, according to what the Prophet sorry, said? W one, will it all just be snatched away at once? Allah will just take knowledge of Islam, uh, one day people wake up and nobody will know anything about Islam. Two, will it be stolen by the Antichrist, the Dajjal, and Masih al-Dajjal, he like steal the knowledge and keep it for himself. Uh, three, will it be by the death of the scholars, the stock scholars dying off? Or four, will the, just the Quran one just disappear? You know? what, did we, what did the Hadith say? Did it say three? And yes, that's the correct answer. Uh, the Prophet said that, uh, that knowledge will be removed, but he said it won't be removed all at once. He said it will be removed by qabd al-ulama, yani wafatuhum, yani mawtuhum. The scholars will die off, and people eventually the ignorant people will be left. Only ignorant people will be left teaching Islam. You know? And people, others will go to them asking them questions. And they will give them fatwas, fatawa, religious rulings, verdicts and stuff, you know, explain Islam to them based upon their ignorance. And they themselves will be astray, and the Prophet said, and they will lead others astray as well, you know, besides them. Uh, people who memorize the Quran, we say hufad. Uh, individual, we say hafid of Quran. It means one who preserved the Quran, memorized the Quran. Plural, we say hufad, hufad of Quran. Um, well, there's a, there is a hadith, uh, we didn't discuss it last week, that mentions the Qur'an being removed from the earth. The Qur'an will not even be left. 
But uh, Sheikh Mustafa al adawi in the footnotes, I didn't, the reason I didn't mention it last week is because in the footnotes of the same book that we were reading from, Sahih uh, al-Muslim, uh, uh, the authentic collection of hadith from the signs of the Day of Judgment, Sheikh Mustafa al adawi said even though some scholars of hadith said this hadith is authentic, he mentioned several problems with the hadith and they said the hadith, this hadith is really weak. This hadith is not, not authentic about the Quran being, uh, it's not that narration, okay? Um, but there is a hadith like that, but it's, it's weak. It's not authentic. You know. uh, okay. Okay, so the next thing we uh, move on to. Believing in al the divine decree al-Qadr, as described above, does not mean that people have no power over the actions that they choose to take. Uh, the Islamic Sharia, in reality, confirms that the person has a will of his own. Okay? So what I want to point out here is that... Um, some people, they, uh, and we'll talk about it more towards the end of the lecture, they use the qadr as an excuse um, uh, to commit bad acts, okay? Say, so, well, I had no power over it, you know. This is the qadr. Allah decreed that this would happen, okay? Well, brother, you should stop smoking heroin. Well, you know, Allah decreed this for me. He must have wanted me to smoke heroin, you know. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, you know, et cetera. And we can go on with all types of examples of evil things people may do and say, well, you know, qadr Allah, you know, Allah decreed this, brother. You know. No, you can't use qadr. It's like, so he said, as, to believe in al-qadr as, as, as we should believe in it, uh, it doesn't mean that people have no power over their actions that they choose to take. It's not an excuse for you to just do, you know, evil things and just say, well, Allah must have wanted me to do that. Okay? Um, this, was, this is something that happened with a former president, uh, just an example, there was a former president of a Muslim country uh, of Pakistan, uh, Benazir Bhutto. Do you all remember Benazir Bhutto? It was a lady. Okay, she was the president of Pakistan some years ago. She was eventually assassinated. She was in a, I'm sorry. Say it again. Oh, she did. Really? Wow. Get out of here. <laughs> what year was it? I, I want to say I remember it. What year? Was it in the 90s or something like this? I, I want to say I remember she came. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think I remember something like this. I don't know if I was living here at the time, but I remember something like that. So, um, so she was in a news interview. She was being interviewed by a reporter, news reporter, and um, they asked her about something, something about that she, decision that she made or something that she did that was clearly against Islam. It was something clearly against Islam, and I won't go. I, I can't really. I don't want to specify. What, I think I remember what it is, but I don't want to guess. So, but I remember that it was something that she, some decision that she had made while she was the president that was, you know, affected the entire country that was un-Islamic. It was clearly against Islam. You know. And so a lot of the religious figures in Pakistan were, you know, speaking out against her and saying bad things about her and what have you. And so, the, this, so it was controversial. And so this religious, I mean, this reporter asked her, what do you think about this? You know, these, you know the, the scholars, the ulama, the scholars of Pakistan, the, the religious people are, are uh, uh, speaking against you and warning against you and saying you're misguided and so forth. And her answer was, look, you know, Allah wanted me to be in this position, you know. If I wouldn't be, then I, if Allah didn't want me here, I wouldn't be the president of Pakistan, you know. And so, and Allah must have wanted me to make this ruling or else he wouldn't have, al have allowed it, you know. <laughs> this was her answer, you know. So, um, this shows that the woman did not understand the aqidah of Islam. She didn't understand Islamic beliefs, you know. Things happen that Allah allows to happen. You know, Allah knows they would happen. He wrote that they would happen. He will his, under his will, he wills it to happen, and he, he allows it to happen. But it doesn't mean that he's pleased with it, okay? Babies, like, what was that, Shady, Shady Hook or Shady, whatever, the, the kids got killed? What, Shady what? In Connecticut, the school. Shady something, Shady Hook or something. Sandy, Sandy Hook, Sandy Hook, yeah. Yeah, thank you, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's evil. You know, someone to go into... Uh, a school, uh, elementary school with children and, and, and murder 20 some odd kids between the ages of, you know, six and nine years old or what have you. This is very, I mean, this is like almost an unthinkable crime, you know. But do we say that, well, Allah must be pleased with that. Allah, you know, no. It's not murdering innocent children. is not something that Allah is pleased with. But he allows it to happen. Did he allow it to happen? Yes, Allah allowed it to happen. Did Allah know that it would happen? Yes, he knew that that guy would do that thing. Did he write that it would happen in the Loh? Yes, it was already written in the Loh al-Mahfuz. Did Allah force the person to do it? No. He just knew the person was going to do that. You know, Allah didn't force the person to do that. You know, this is not uh, 
The person's not mujbar, we say mujbar. Ijbar means compelling, forcing somebody to do something. Allah didn't force the person to do their evil deed. Allah just knew beforehand what they were going to choose. Allah knew what, they were going, what answer they were going to pick on the test. <laughs> you know, that this is the test. This, this life is a life of, of mihna, of test, okay? of testing, you know, empty hand. You know? But um, Allah does not force us to, into our actions. We have the will to choose what we want to do. You know, Allah has given humanity, human beings, free will to choose right from wrong, okay? To choose right from wrong, okay? As Allah says, man 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 Whoever wills, let him believe. Whoever wills, let him disbelieve. Showing that Allah gives us a mashia, a human beings, we have a will, okay? Uh, to decide good from, right from wrong, good from bad, etc. Allah just knew, because of his infinite knowledge, he knew beforehand what you're going to pick. <laughs> you don't know, you know, so you, you, know, you don't understand? You don't know, so you can't say, well, Allah is going to Allah force me to, you know, to whatever, you know, become a co cocaine addict or whatever. No, you don't know what you're going to mean. Allah knew beforehand what you were going to choose, but Allah, Allah just knew what you were going to choose. All right? So it's not him forcing you, but he, he knows his creatures and he knows everything that we're going to do and what will happen. Okay? So this is not an excuse. You know, so the point is that uh, this, our belief in, in Al-Qadr does not mean that we have no power over our actions that we choose. We do have power over our actions that we choose. Okay? And then so he brings some, uh, the, uh, some verses from the Qur'an. Well, Allah, for, for example, he says, فَمَنْ شَاءَ تَخَذَ إِلَى رَبِّهِ مَآبًا Allah says, so whoever wills, let him take a return to his Lord by obeying his commandments. Okay? Allah says, whoever, for whoever wills. Whoever wills, you, have, you can choose to uh, you know, take the path that you know, will lead you to Allah, you know, meaning paradise and you know, doing good deeds by obeying his commands. Okay? And then he brings uh, another verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, Okay. So keep, keep your duty to Allah, fear Allah as much as you are able, as much as you can, fear Allah as much as you can, as you are able, and listen to and obey. Listen to Allah's commands and obey those who are in authority. Okay. And then Allah brings another. He brings another verse where Allah says, That Allah does not burden any person beyond his scope, meaning more than with anything more than you can bear. Allah does not burden anyone with more than they can bear. The person will get the reward for that good which he has earned, and he will be punished for that evil which he has earned. Okay? Meaning the person themselves do the deeds, and they're the ones who decide, and they're the ones who earn paradise or hellfire based upon what they choose to do, the choices they make in this life. Allah has not forced them. Okay? But Allah simply knew ahead of time what they would choose, but he still ha must allow us to act. Because it could be that Allah, could, Allah knew what we're going to do, so Allah could just say, okay, well, I know these people are going to be good, and these people are going to be bad, so skip life. Hell, hellfire in paradise, boom, you know, right after he created everything, throw, put the good people in paradise and put the bad people in the hellfire. But what's the problem with this? Why wouldn't Allah do that? Why wouldn't Allah do that? Imagine, okay, imagine if I'm a, I'm a professor in a university course or what have you, and, uh, okay, we have the first week of school, and I see already there are people sit, piling up in the back seats of the back, up against the wall in the back, and they're putting their heads down sleeping, okay? And then I see there's another group who sits at the front, they take notes, they participate interactively in the class, raising their hands, asking questions, coming up to the board, working problems. And then there's that same group every day, they come in and they sit up at the back wall, they put their hoodies on and they, over their head, and they put their heads down and they sleep, and they text and they're on their iPods and they're sleeping or whatever. Okay? I can't just say, okay, you all failed, you all, you get A's. I still have to do what? I have to give them the test. <laughs> I have to administer the, the, the test. If I, if I don't, I'm not being fair. Okay, <laughs> they they have they can t have a claim against me to go to the dean of the of the university or the, that college and complain that he just failed us and he never even gave us a test. How is that fair? You know, you know how is that fair that he just failed us and he never even gave us a test? So it's not fair. So Allah is just. Allah is fair. Okay, he, Allah deals with things according with according to qist and adl. Okay, adala, justice. Okay, so he still has to allow us to carry out our deeds. He knows we're going to what we're going to choose and what we're going to do, but he, on the day of judgment, we would have a case against Allah if he just threw us into the hellfire and we didn't do anything to deserve it. So he lets us act. You know, I know what they're going to choose, but you know, let them act out. So <laughs> let them carry on and act out, show out and act a clown, you know, as we say, act a fool. Because, <laughs> because on the day of judgment, that way they can't say that I didn't do, earn this with my own hands. You, you were unjust to me. You just threw me in the hellfire for no reason. No, you earned what you earned with your own hands, you know. All right. you, under, you all understand the point? So this is a test. This life is a testing period for us, 
We don't know what Allah has pre-decreed, determined. We don't know what's written in Allah al-Mahfuz, okay? All right? So we have to still have to act in, 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 according to our, carry out our deeds in this life. Even though Allah knows what we're going to choose, but we don't know what Allah knows about us. So we have to carry, we have to act out and live out our lives. And hopefully our khawatim amal, our final deeds will be the deeds of people of Iman and we will go to paradise, okay? We won't die upon, inshallah, we won't die upon disbelief and, and rejection of faith and misguidance, okay? But we don't know, so we still have to you know, act and we do our prayers and we fast Ramadan and we do the things we're supposed to do and try to obey Allah so that we meet him and he's pleased with us, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and let me see how we are on time. Okay, good. So the next thing, as for the reality of things, every human knows that he has a power and a will of his own. He uses his power and will to indulge in or avoid actions of his choice, actions of his choice. Mankind distinguished uh, between what they do by their own power and between, that, uh, between what they have no power over, like shivering due to illness or extreme, cool, extreme coldness, that's something we have no power over. Your heart beating, something you have no power over. Your lungs exchanging carbon dioxide and gas in the uh, alveolar sacs in your lungs, you have no power over that. Okay? But there are things that we do have power over. So we distinguish between those things that we can control and those things we can't control. However, the power and will of mankind is under the control of Allah's will and power. Okay? And so he brings a verse from the Quran uh, in Surah 81, verses 28 uh, through 29, where it says, To whomsoever among you who wills to walk straight, and you will not unless it be that Allah wills the Lord of all the worlds. Okay? Well, Allah says, So in this, Allah is saying, لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يَسْتَقِيمُ so this is guidance for those who amongst you who, who wish, who will to walk straight, meaning to follow the straight path. Mustaqim, yani sirat al-mustaqim, the path that is straight. That we, in Surah Al-Fatiha, we say, ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. Guide us to the path that is straight, Allah. Guide us to the straight path. So he's talking about that straight path. So this guidance, this book, this Quran, this revelation is a guidance, this Islam is a guidance for whoever wills amongst you to follow this path that is straight, the straight path. Okay? And Allah says, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالِمِينَ And you all do not will except unless that Allah will, has already willed and he is the Lord that all, of all that exists. So meaning that even our will, Allah, that is still also under the تَحْتَ مَشِيَةِ اللَّهِ It's under the will of Allah. Okay? Allah has already, because remember we said in the beginning, of those four aspects of qadr, belief in qadr, of them is that whatever happens is according to Allah's will. Okay? So we do have a will, some limited will within what we're able to control, but even that, Allah is, that's, we only allow to do what Allah wills and wants, uh, lets us do. Okay? All right. So, um, so we choose, but even what we choose, uh, only, it's, even that is according to what Allah has allowed us to do. Okay? Um, so the universe is Allah's property, and nothing happens in his kingdom without his knowledge and without his permission. Okay? So that's something to understand. All right? Okay, quiz question. And with this, we'll take a break because it's, uh, it's top of the hour. Uh, so uh, of the major signs of the Day of Judgment are all of the following except... Of the major signs of the Day of Judgment are all of the following, except, okay, this is one of those except questions, okay. The sun rising from the west, so you have to be careful, think carefully, because it's an except, you know. Uh, so you're actually going to be picking the wrong, the thing that is not correct, <laughs> you get it? <laughs> all right. Uh, the coming out of the Antichrist, who is a Dajjal, let me see, Dajjal. The splitting of the Red Sea. The return of Isa, Jesus, Isa ibn Maryam, the son of Mar Mar Maryam, Mary. And the three major, or three major earthquakes. So which one of those is not a sign a major, of the major signs of al-Ashrat al-Kubra, the major signs of the, of, of, of the hour, of the, of the final hour? Do I hear C and D? <laughs> okay, C, splitting of the Red Sea. That's a major sign of the Day of Judgment? Okay, all right. So that would be our answer then, if it's not. Remember, we're picking the wrong answer. Right. We're picking the wrong answer. Which one is not a sign of the Day of Judgment, okay. of the major signs of the Day of Judgment? And that's correct. C is the correct answer. It is not a, sign, a major sign of the Day of Judgment. That happened with Nebi Musa. That happened with uh, uh, the, the Messenger of Allah, Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi Musa, Musa Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, he, Allah told him to strike the staff, strike the sea with his with his asa, his staff, and it split, you know, like this. 
And according to uh, authentic narration from Abdullah ibn Abbas, I don't know if you all knew this, it didn't just split in one place. It split in 12 places, one for each of the tribes of Israel. It wasn't just like, you know, how the Christians understand it to be in the Bible, that it just split in, in, one, in one place. It split in 12 places, according to the tafsir of Ibn Abbas of, of this verse, the prophet's companion, Ibn Abbas. Right. And he only knew that, and we, we accepted it as being authentic, because how, how could Ibn Abbas know that? How could Ibn Abbas know what, that this happened with Musa? Hmm? The prophet had to have told him that. He didn't, Ibn Abbas didn't meet Musa. <laughs> Only way Ibn Abbas could speak about something that's of the ghayb for him, it's of the unseen for him, like that, with that type of authority, is that he heard it from the Messenger of Allah. Okay? All right. So anytime we have an authentic narration from one of the companions, the Prophet's companions, and it's about something that they did not witness or it's of the unseen matters, then that means that they got it from the Prophet. They would not just make up something you know, of the unseen or something that they did not experience, except for the Prophet told them that. You know? okay? All right. so, so it has the, even though it's... Um, uh, it has the hukum of being marafur, we say. We, it has the ruling that it is really from the prophet, even though it reaches back to this companion. If it's about an unseen matter and it's authentic back to him, then we know the Sahaba wouldn't just speak lie on Allah or make up things about Islam. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, inshallah, we'll save this. We could, we'll take a break now for uh, about 10 minutes or so, and we'll come back and we'll conclude. I'm going to try to finish uh, bef by 11.40. We're going to stop at 11.40, so I'll have time to call into the, uh, the Al-Basira telelink and be online for Sheikh uh, Mis'ad Al-Husseini, insha'Allah. Okay, so we'll start with that.